Okie dokie. This is the last of the uh, Rise of the Repu Roman Republic scenarios that I'm going to do. It's Thunderbolt. I only left one out, the hypothetical. This is a tiny one and is actually kind of the suggested first start. That's okay. I think I'm likely to make lots of mistakes on any of them. Uh, mainly strategic errors at this point rather than so many rules mistakes. So this one's going to cover uh, part of the Second Punic War and Hannibal's invasion. It starts from Hannibal's invasion and goes uh, across the Alps and goes for the next uh, three years. And we're not gonna, we ignore the water, we ignore the islands, we're just gonna deal with the boot here basically. And Northern Italy too in this one. Which is strange because there are some um, territories that largely aren't in play. I think everything is in play in one scenario or another, but there are counters that don't seem to be actually uh, uh, in play, like some of the Carthaginian stuff, for example, their ambassadors. Uh, maybe there was thought of a three-player scenario or something um, for the uh, eagle is landed to replace Carthage and make them their own power. I'm not sure. Anyway. In this one, we have some initial deployments, the Roman army, and Longus is going to be in charge of it, even though we've got a Scipio with us, Publius, uh, facing Hannibal. Uh, now, the initial lambs say, hey, grab my cup. Uh, we're only going to have one council activation in there, and it has to be Longus to be activated. Whatever you do with them, that's fine, but at least as far as I recall. What the hell's attached to my foot? Okay. Um, ooh, Rome has an IDS of 10 in this one. Is it different than some of the other ones? Yeah. Okay, so Rome has gotten a little bigger than all the other large cities by the time of this one. But um, let's see what we got here. Um... We're not going to have auguries, we're not going to have diplomacy, but the diplomacy chart is in play for when you take things, they have an effect. Uh, the Roman consuls are going to come in historically. You don't get to randomly pick or anything like that. And it kind of makes sense for such a short scenario. Uh, it might destabilize things if you had a big pool of them. Uh, the Roman field council are considered the same in this. And they're allowed to pretty much uh, be in play anywhere on the map. However, if they want to enter Rome, they have to request it. There's probably no need to go for uh, 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 a tribute or anything like that. Uh, I can't think of any reason you'd want to because your rules really don't allow you to extend them, uh, prorogue them. Uh, no navies, no diplomacy. Uh, a player can freely enter the cities in a province if that province or alliance marker is in his favor. Only adjusted for major victories and devastation. And that, that seems to indicate that looting only has an effect on that first scenario again. That that was intentional. Um, if there's a dictator in the game... It's going to be Fabius, and he only serves for a year. Remember, there are requirements that bring him in. You really actually want him because Fabius is pretty decent, I think. Uh, here he is. At least he has a lot of uh, actions. He doesn't have... He's not good in combat. Um, Hannibal is terrific in combat. And there's nothing that matches him in this, in, in this set. Probably not in the first Punic War either, I would guess. Um, okay, where else are we? Other councils. If the Roman need other councils as proconsuls, there are replacements. There's one in there. Uh, however, you can dig up other derated leaders or worse uh, to use in their place. Roman legions are raised normally. Carthaginians are going to get 10 Gallic infantry for each victory that they achieve in any province in or north of Etruria and Umbria. 
So any successes up in the north, get them some extra Gaelic troops. If it's a major victory, it's 25 Gaelic infantry. They're also allowed to do normal raised manpower throughout Italy. This is worded a little differently, but... Uh, so the troops have to be placed with any Carthaginian force in or adjacent to the province in which they're raised. Uh, provincial control. Now this is really weird. All control is considered military, however. What? For entries marked with an asterisk... Let's see. All control is considered military, however, for entries marked with an asterisk. Control does not automatically revert to the original owning player when the conditions of 11, 13, 14. Who knows what the hell that is. Um, Jesus. Instead, they have to go back to 11, 13, 14, or whatever the hell that is. So, I don't know what the hell they want. <laughs> I think the two things that are asterisked are considered military control, but for some reason I've got them marked here as political control because this says to do that, and I just don't know. Uh, Umbrium and Pisenium are Roman allies and diplomatically controlled. What the hell? You know? <laughs> um, hey! Maybe they fix this in 1.1. You know, there's always a hope. I'm not counting on 2.0 fixing anything because I don't have that. That's out in the interwebs, and I'm not going to go look that up. But this may just, I may just trash this and stop playing it because I'm, yeah, I'm getting kind of sick of this game, mainly because of the rule books. I think it was just a terrible job. No one should put out a game in this condition. No reasonable company. And GMT at this time should have been reasonable. I don't know. I don't know why they went through a period which was so bad. I don't remember their earliest games being uh, so troubled. Okay, what are we on here? I don't have numbers for this shit. All right, let's see. Maybe it says it here. All medium cities have an idea. Yeah, that's not helpful. Okay, so it looks to me like they got rid of this shit. They just deleted all that crap. <laughs> so I'm going to ignore it. In fact, I probably ought to just take a pencil to it. That's what I like to do to correct a game, but I don't expect the rule book to require 50% of it to be replaced and, and uh, changed. And that's really... This is not far from that, to tell you the truth. Okay, so although not stipulated in the rules, I'm using that first consular move to throw good old, uh, oh, who the hell is here? Longus up against Hannibal in his same hex. Um, the move, well, it cost me, I think, about six attrition points. Does that work? Yeah. And there was over a hundred strength points there, so I killed off four units getting in there. Um, Hannibal wants to intercept this, probably. Oh, he's going to pay another one to cross the river. You know what? I'm only moving to here. Now... I'm going to stop there and not actually make an attack. The reason being, uh, I'm kind of screening the river line there. And I'm not taking the penalty for crossing it. I don't want to take that crossing penalty. It's a mixed view to the whole thing. But uh, if Hannibal intercepts, he's going to have to cross the river. So he's penalized anyway. So now Hannibal may try to slip around to the side. And that'll probably work out pretty badly for the Romans, but probably no worse than the historical uh, result was, which was the destruction of two consular armies, uh, two double legions, uh, sorry, four double legions total. Now, that's a lot of strength. 
with the auxiliaries and everything and it, it's a very very powerful force so uh, it's not something I want to just throw away but I do want to have it up there because uh, Carthage's victory conditions are seven contiguous Italian provinces uh, by the end of the turn but Capua can count as part of that with so that it drops it down to five contiguous provinces and as well every major victory Hannibal gets he gets to drop that number of provinces by one um, since there's no diplomacy or anything in here it's going to be kind of tough to take control of things uh, Hannibal is probably going to have to split his forces but he really does have to probably take care of this big force uh, otherwise anyway since we're not having a fight on the first day and I was going to just push right through but didn't pay the uh, attrition. Let's see if I get a okay. Get another activation. Is there anything I can do here? Yes, there is. I'm allowed to raise troops, and that's where I'm going to go. So I start moving Hannibal across the river, and I make an interception attempt. Actually, not sure. I think I could have done the better guy, but the distance is a penalty here and I ended up rolling a six which wouldn't have been good enough so I have a failed uh, failed interception not a failed avoidance they're the same thing basically and now Hannibal wants to go slam into this with his army um, because that gives him a couple extra bonus plus he's not going to get hit on the river line so he's going to get the battle that he wants there I have to pay uh, my attrition check but then I'm going to hit it real hard with the whole uh, the whole Carthaginian army. And I think we'll probably uh, use some elephants in that too. If I could roll the continuation. But even Hannibal's capable of failing. He's got a big 7. They're now together here with no attack underway. Time for another draw. Oh, don't ask me how, but the 4th Hannibal chit got drawn. Maybe I haven't shaken things up well enough or whatever. And he launches his attack, and I really ought to put a little marker here. The failed in, uh, interception is no longer in play, but I get to bring the whole armies in. And we'll go through the procedure, um, even though I've done it several times in some of the other games. Just, uh, well, because this is pretty big to start things off. Well, Scipio ended up winning uh, command for the turn. Remember, I randomly roll between the two consoles for this. So we've got a C versus an A. I'll use the dark die for uh, for Hannibal. And he's going to get a plus 7. Scipio is a 4. So right now we're at 3 over. Command efficiency. A C can only command 4 double legions. Well, that's all we have. It's not 4 legions total. It's 4 double legions. Subordinate points, none here, but Hannibal brings three additional subordinates with him that give him uh, a bonus. The bonus is the number over here to the right of the normal command rating. So we're up to plus six on the die roll. Um, the next thing is the combat ratio adjustment. Uh, I'm around 80 here. I'm right around a hundred here. That's going to be a minus one because I'll be on the one to one point five table. I've got less troops, but it's not uh, a fifty percent difference. So we'll just fake that right away. Cav superiority. Well, I got to count my cav. Thirteen, twenty, twenty-nine cav to four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's a 13 point cav differential in the clear by uh, non Romans. That's going to give me four more points. Oh, this is not looking good for the Romans at all. Roman discipline, nothing's disciplined. Elite units, I have my Numidians, and I think that's the only one that I have there. No status. Uh, elephants. Do I need elephants with a plus 10 on the die roll? Well, 
let's take a quick look at the elephant table because maybe I don't want to use them. Uh, of course, last time I had problems, but um, you can see it's just going to wipe out some troops. It looks more useful in small battles. I'm going to hold on to my elephants, and I'm just going to roll it plus 10 here. Chances are this is going to go very well for me. I get an 18 total. I'm going to take an asterisk. The Romans are going to take 30%. This is a major victory. Uh, major victory out here in Liguria Torini. Swings that over to anti-Roman. Gallia Massalia. I don't think that exists. No. Uh, Liguria Frenates and Gallia uh, Transpanata are going to be adjacent to this. So they each get one. I'm not certain about this. I'm not certain that's supposed to have its own uh, its own little chit. They may be linked. It would be a matter of, well, the countermix you know, added some useless counters because those really aren't useful in any other scenario, but that's uh, not unreasonable. And we're going to have a disordered uh, disordered Carthaginian army anyhow. They do have to try to recover from it, uh, but they have uh, done a great deal of damage here and we're probably going to see a pursuit. Remember we were around 13 on here. That's going to be uh, a die roll modifier of four, I believe that's going to be four more casualties taken, in, unless I'm mistaken. I'll have to look that up. It's not just strength points. Uh, so the modifier is four, and that's going to be multiplied by. Uh, this is not actually like explained in the in the rules correctly, or if it is, it's stuck somewhere stupid. Where it's explained is in this example here. Maybe it's in the later rule books. I've had this issue before where. Uh, so what I'm going to do is multiply a die roll by four. Okay, so it's going to be an additional 30% casualties on the Romans. They've already taken 30%. Now they take more uh, and they're just, you know, going to dissolve from this. And the Romans are falling back because I think the rules to this one stated that these guys on their side of the board, they kind of control. So they could have fallen into a city uh, if it was even just tilted pro-Roman. But in, these guys are not tilted pro-Roman, so I had to just retreat. I'm trying to put some space in between. Casualties, Scipio is dead. Uh, the other guy was wounded. There's a plus one to the die roll for the losing side. Hannibal's wounded. That's going to throw kind of a monkey wrench into his plans. Uh, anyway, with Hannibal out of the way, he can't try to roll for an attempt to continue with his disrupted forces. His other leaders can break off pieces of that force, can try to uh, take him into cities and rally him and such. Not, but that's about it. Okay, um, after a useless siege attrition, I drew the Bommel card. Now, what's kind of weird here is without Hannibal in the field, there's no overall commander. So anyone can take command of this stack as far as I can see, which means actually having Hannibal out of it, except for the combat penalty. He's just so good a leader. Well, Mamalcar is going to be my temporary leader, I guess. Now, he's not the best person in the world to lead this force. However, this force is leaderless. It's also useless. I think... I'm going to charge up against it, but I did forget one thing. That major victory, that gets me like uh, 25 uh, Gallic infantry added to my force, which I have to dig up out of here. You know, those are the Gauls, and put it in there. But otherwise, I'm going to launch a quick attack on this and keep trying to beat it. As long as it's a fairly large force and in bad shape, the best way I can get my diplomatic effects is by beating up on these forces. So I may be able to swing uh, a number of uh, territories here into my camp uh, by this means. And that's how I need to, that's what I need to do to get uh, victory in the game. Um, 
Now this happens only if I hold it at the whole game, at the end of the game, holding the seven provinces. That makes it uh, a little harder in the sense of something random and without auguries and such in it, maybe it's not going to be as bad. But something random can kind of happen that can deprive me of a province that I would have uh, otherwise had. I'm not quite sure what the seven is supposed to mean that it hits on turn three, you know. It seems to me that if Hannibal reaches that level at any point, he should have the victory, but hey, whatever. Well, another 25 uh, Gallic troops added in. Now we can see uh, the Carthaginians are beginning to disintegrate a little bit here. They're down to disorganized. You really don't want to start fighting at that level. So I've got to find a place to go hide. Um, since I succeeded in the battle, I do get to attempt... Let's see, we had a Mago did the attack here. I do get to attempt a continuation with him, I believe. I'm trying to remember here, but... There we go. Nope. Um, because the political effect of this was really now we've got... Uh, both the Ligurias uh, and Transalpine Gaul have all shifted over. So the cities in this region I could duck into and get myself uh, a recovery there eventually. Most of the chit that's left, well, everything except for a siege action, are the Carthaginian army. So I can just try to rally that. And then maybe split it up a little bit. The danger, of course, just splitting it up is the Romans can field more armies. This one's gone. Uh, it's down to four strength points. Uh, the second councilor army is gone completely. It was just wiped out by the pursuit. I think I was doing the pursuits wrong at one point during Eagle has landed or whatever. It's not that big a deal because nobody really had the huge cab advantages that uh, the Carthaginians have here. Um, there is an extra counselor army number three, and that's going to be able to uh, switch to veteran at the end of the turn. So there will be some forces to face Hannibal here, but he's just rampaging. And, you know, part of that is maybe the best thing to do is not to face him up in the north. But those are the orders that they were under, essentially. Okay, we're about to see some uh, recovery taking place. I need one of these for my turn marker here. Um, the end of the turn came, I split my Carthaginian forces into two, laying down sieges in a couple of major cities. Uh, this one's part of Gallia Cisalpina. If I take a minor along with that major, I hope it is. Yeah, it looks like it. The border is really annoying right there. Um, if I take this major and a minor, that's a province under my control. Right now I've got three. That would be number four. Uh, you, uh, the Aturians, I have to take two mediums and a minor. That's going to be a harder job to take. That would push it over. But alternatively, I could um, devastate the province. But I can't do that now. The only way I can devastate the province is to keep the force in there. Both those forces are big enough. There's no Roman army facing me. Uh, if I could swing things to, say, five armies, that would be great. By my understanding of the game, which is, of course, very limited, uh, Hannibal not being on the board, he's the overall commander, means I can't raise troops. Uh, I'm still going to get you know, my Gallic reinforcements that I got, or I, I still got those for winning the battles, but I can't do a troop uh, mustering uh, uh, action. So instead, I've settled down for these actions. Kind of sucks. It would have been nice to add a whole bunch more troops in play. I would have been getting some, had I done it earlier, off of a lot of the provinces up here, but that's okay. I got plenty of troops. Rome doesn't look like they hold much at all. Um, do you remember we got pre-programmed leaders for the Romans, but two major uh, victories by Hannibal, and that means we got a uh, dictator automatic, and our dictator is of course Fabius. 
Uh, he's kind of an interesting critter. Sucks in battle. Yeah, lots of uh, ability to roll and get another action. Three chits in the cup. Three guile. Uh, what is that? Oh, he's a good uh, diplomat if that were to matter, but it doesn't in this. Um, I've also taken Rufius as my master of horse. <laughs> it only throws one shit in the cup. However, what's uh, nice about him is he's actually a reasonable leader. Um, my two councils are kind of useless. Except for filling things up. Flaminius I've got here. He's really not terribly helpful at all. And then up here I've got the somewhat better uh, Geminius with the hopes that, well, I don't know, <laughs> maybe he'll do something. The Praetor, that's just my urban legion there. If I lose Rome, I lose the game, so I gotta be careful like I wasn't in my first scenario. Oh, Hannibal's back on the board. I threw him down here because he'll be more useful pushing around through Etruria where I have more to do. I don't think I have as much to do in the Cisalpine regions. These guys can be, can end up as something of an annoyance. Um, that is actually my field council there. I'm just using that. Remember, there's no differentiation in rank here, but with a dictator in place, that helps my troop uh, production. So I'm actually in the position where uh, Fabius, I'll be able to generate more troops than I would otherwise have been able to see in this kind of leadership. I have an extra leader who came back. Longus is still alive. Uh, I'll put him over here. He's not really terribly useful, but he makes a replacement who's at least historically was around at this era. I think he died in that battle. Unlike Scipio, who <laughs> uh, clearly died in my battle there. Poor Scipio. No, that's not the Scipio, but anyway. Uh, Onward. Fabius opens things up, getting the dictator chip. He's got a bunch of them in there, so he can make uh, three manpower calls this game, uh, this turn. He spent one of his uh, guile. He really doesn't have a lot else to use his abilities on. He's not going out into combat. He's not allowed to, because he had a master of horse. And he got a good roll. Ended up raising three new legions, all in Rome ready to go out and face Hannibal again. It's not enough to stop Hannibal, but it may be enough to force Hannibal to try to keep his units in supporting distance. <clears throat> Although the lead force is still quite large, I think around 80 strength points, which is probably enough to handle anything Fabius can throw at him. Um, now remember, the Fabian strategy is probably not sufficient to win this scenario because uh, Carthage Hannibal can just kind of bypass Fabius's forces. He has to bring them, he has a, the Romans have to bring Hannibal to, to a battle and win, and that's hard. Or uh, so kind of, this is more the Fabian strategy, uh, divert his attention. So if Hannibal marches down uh, this way with all his forces to work on the south and grab Capua, well, well the Romans will move back up here and start uh, m uh, militarily conquering whatever territories that uh, have been swung against them. They're not going to be able to win uh, the hearts and minds probably through battle or even siege. The, the things just don't move enough, although uh, plunder might work. Um, uh, no, uh, devastation, devastation. But that's a slow and long process, and I think you can't be in this city to do it. Uh, I'm trying to remember. No, it actually looks like you can devastate from within a city, which is cool. Um, it's just somebody who's in a city can't stop you from devastating. Uh, anyway, so that, that is probably his main tool to uh, fighting Hannibal, which means uh, Hannibal has to siege those troops. He doesn't have uh, siege engines, I don't think. 
I'm not positive of that. There are some in the game, so I'm not sure why he wouldn't. Yeah, he's able, I, I think, able to build them. I'll have to look at the specifics on that. But he's probably going to need them to face this strategy. The problem is he doesn't have a lot of time here. It's only a three-turn scenario. Uh, so, you know, it may be hard to, to take the cities on. Um, the other option, of course, is for Hannibal to split his forces. But that'll leave the force he's not with as a somewhat weaker thing. Now, we saw it could beat up on this other Roman legion here. But... Eh, you know, <laughs> there's only uh, there's only sort of so much that it can do, and I think facing uh, four full double legions is maybe more than Hannibal's subordinate can do. Okay, well, uh, Hannibal got the next ship, and he did a quick assault, took his eye, and. Uh, that was kind of expensive. He took 13 casualties, the 25% of his force storming the city. Kind of makes you think, ah, maybe he should have gone for a treachery or an involuntary surrender or some such. Um, instead, uh, I think he had the 10 times strength and would have been almost certain to get the surrender. The, siege, the assault was a little bit more likely. Um, I think he was assured it actually. <laughs> but the cost was high, and he may not want to do that again, because he has so many troops facing. The IDS was only four there for uh, ten times. That means he only needed 40 strength points of infantry, which he easily has still. Uh, and then also there's the option of the treachery table, but that's a little, uh, that's a little if iffy. Uh, you know, he has to spend guile, I think, and... It's only like 50-50. He's much better off trying to force the involuntary surrender. So I learned a lesson there. Um, here, siege attrition made uh, Placentia go over. And you can see this has had a big effect on the uh, alliance levels. In particular, Etruria is only three away. <sighs> Which means I don't actually have to conquer the whole thing, but the problem is it's easier to conquer it than it is to uh, uh, to sit around and try to uh, sway them. Uh, military conquest, though, means I don't get troops from them. So it might be, gee, if I can only do one, I might want to just stay in the province and try to sway it uh, through the plunder, uh, through the uh, devastation rules. Um, same thing, of course, with Cisalpine Gaul, although that, if I can find another way to generate a point, which I don't see in Gaul itself, but I do have over here in Etruria, which would sway them over. That would be worthwhile. So that's probably going to be my next move. And we're also seeing some movement over here. You know, things like Umbria and, and, and um, Venice is beginning to move and such. Not. Uh, we only need seven, five if we can get to Capua, but that's a long walk down. All right, here's one of them particularly tough decisions to make. I just drew the magnet just straight, straight equum. There's nothing I can do with him except go and engage. But what? <coughs> if I try to slip past, and this will be kind of painful, I could conceivably get, you know, a siege here or here. That would be nice. Hannibal's sure to come after me. On the other hand, I could try to relieve the Etrurian siege up here. Uh, or I could just be Fabius and do none of those. Um, maybe try to park it in some important city, like up here uh, in Umbria, to make sure that, uh, that we have some sort of safety. The problem is, I feel like I'm fully capable of building another army this turn with Fabius. So I'm going to use him not like Fabius here. I think I'm going to launch some sort of attack. The question is which. 
I think the Siege of Pizai is probably my best move because there's kind of nice terrain here if I can force Hannibal to come back and fight a battle. But if Hannibal can fight a battle, he can win a battle and thereby sway the hearts and minds even better than he can otherwise. Which means uh, I'll probably be ending up losing more than <laughs> if I stay home. Ah. Uh. So the Master of Harsh went for the long march north instead to lay siege, crossing a river, Mahrabal intercepts him. Okay. The overall was probably a slight penalty, a minus two or something like that, but it ended up uh, with a lousy roll um, up here, 25% losses for the Romans. Uh, that what is that dark? The dark indicates they must retreat, yeah. Um, but it does bring one thing up. When you're calculating losses in this game, I've been fudging this all along to determine major victory. Hey, did you get enough to count as a major victory? And this is a battle where I'm not absolutely certain um, that I reached the two to one odds necessary for a major victory. I think I'm going to have to either use two calculators to keep track of total losses or whatever, because since you do losses by class of unit, uh, so, you know, uh, the uh, Carthaginians took Gallic losses, they took uh, African losses, etc. It all becomes kind of obscure how many total units, strength points you lost. And then for the Romans, they have at least two classes of units uh, with a legion in terms of the legionary infantry and the cab. They don't have to calculate per uh, legionary component, but they do have to calculate by type. And again, it's not absolutely clear to me that, geez, I reached that two to one odds in this one. Uh, I'm saying I did because I think I did. Um, but, and, and that's going to give a whole bunch of galls here. Uh, just because that 25 to 15 and the Romans had nearly 2 to 1 advantage. So it seems almost certain that they did. But I've really got to start being more careful about calculating up the losses that each side takes so that I can accurately assess whether it's a major victory or not. Anyhow, this one I think probably was. The other one certainly was. A, a pursuit counts in, but there was no significant pursuit here. Um, Mahrabal doesn't have all that much of the calf. In fact, uh, the Romans had a pretty solid calf thing. But anyway, that switches Cisalpine Gaul over to the uh, Carthaginian side, another one over, and it's going to make your Curia closer, and also, of course, Venetia and Umbria have gotten closer too. So we're getting to the point where it's looking pretty ugly for the Romans. This army isn't devastated the way the other one was. The other one just got trashed with those two battles. All right. The Gauls are actually an important consideration uh, for the Carthaginians. As long as they're fighting up here, and I think there are seven provinces for them up there. The reinforcements that they get from Gallic troops might make it worthwhile to keep their force up there. On the other hand, they can make life a lot easier if they take Capua. Or Rome, but uh, Capua looks a lot easier to take. Uh, if Rome stores a decent-sized force there, well, that may change things. But uh, as, as things stand right now, I could just sweep down there and probably take it uh, fairly quickly if I desired that. But since there's no automatic victory in this, you gotta last out the three turns. You gotta make the Carthaginians solid at, at their victory conditions. Um, I don't know. <laughs> and it's only three turns, damn it. <laughs> I mean, that run down here, I could do that next turn, but it's just, it, it, it's, this is an interesting puzzle. Um, and an and interesting, not pure puzzle, because there's a lot of risk, etc., uh, to calculate into it. Um, it's not something where you can say, ah, yeah, if I get that there, I'm almost assured to do this. It, this game doesn't allow for that, and I like that. Mahabal uh, launched himself into an attack against Rufinius, or whatever his name is. Eh, he's gone, he's dead. Um, yeah, Rufius. Rufus. Well, yeah, he died in the battle, but he won the battle. It was only a minor victory, so it's not going to affect uh, the, 
the di diplomatic situation in the area. But it does actually put a halt to all of this. However, Hannibal might still be interested in destroying that force. Hitting a useless force seemed like a good idea. I think it came out right about even when I, I took into account the fact of the river. I didn't want to swipe, sweep into this space because I would have had to pay, uh, well, because the defender could have marched up saying, hey, I'm defending the river line anyway, um, it is the main reason. And I just didn't, uh, didn't see that as terribly valuable. So I marched right across the river, took the, the hit for that. It ended up being an extraordinary result. And unfortunately for Mahraba, or I can never remember people's names, Mahraba, uh, he doesn't have any guile. <laughs> he just charged straight in. Uh, and uh, Rufus actually had one that he spent, so he was able to modify the die roll. Uh, it ended up being a kind of poor die roll, and it ended up with that same 25-10 result. Uh, however, it missed by one the major victory criteria. It was uh, 9 to 17 losses, which you know just drives the Carthaginians back and doesn't do a whole hell of a lot to them. It does stop Mahrabal from uh, getting his action, though. Uh, a continuation. So the next pick was a Rome Council pick, and that's tough. I've got a Rome Council here who can only command half the forces there, and then another one here whom I used it to lay siege to uh, uh, Genoa. The reason being, I got nowhere to retreat to safely. I, I could take a long march down this way and probably make it uh, down to uh, Umbria, but I need to recover forces somehow. And laying siege, hey, maybe I'll get lucky and take the last point out on a siege attrition shit or something and then be able to recover up there. And once I recover, or even before that, I can maybe reinforce um, my legions. The next shit is Hannibal. And I'm going to go for that, uh, try to convince the city to surrender. It seems like this is the good time to do that. So, oh man, actually I'm not sure if that's going to give me a diplomatic. Somewhere or another tells me that cities are, on a, this is all messed up, but wherever it tells me that taking a city counts as a major victory, it's not listed in here, but it's listed somewhere else, isn't it? Oh, concluding a siege by attrition or assault, but not surrender or treachery. Ugh. Maybe I need to assault it to convert Etruria. Uh, two more pips gets me over there. Yeah, I think I got to go for the assault just for the uh, just for the morale effect, even though that's going to hurt me troop wise. I'm almost certain to take it. Let's count his forces. He is. Oh geez, I hope I got the right one here. He's army two. Yeah. So he's got 19. I don't count the elephants. Uh, 26, 35 to 4. That's not going to be the 10 to 1, so I couldn't do it anyway. So I'm on the 6 to 1 table. Uh, leaders. Leader superiority gives me a plus one, so it's automatic. So now the only question is how much loss do I take? I roll odd, which means 25% of my force is destroyed on that attack. But it is going to swing some things over into my hands here pick was Hannibal and he came uh, sliding up this way for an attack on the Roman army smashed it again uh, they tried to withdraw I'm not sure whether or not this again is not terribly easy to understand whether or not that whole force could have withdrawn I made an attempt to because it would have been it was clearly a hopeless battle it ended up with the withdrawal at like plus 17 or something on the die roll I think I don't remember or maybe plus 14 and I rolled a total of 17 Anyway, the Romans were to, uh, took 30% losses, plus a pursuit of another 20% or so. Uh, not a good situation. You can see the forces have been really weakened. This Rome Council is still up here because if a, Rome, if a council marker comes up, I'm allowed to replace that with, like, uh, well, it'll be a pro-council at this point. Um, 
just from my sort of excess leaders here at random. But uh, unfortunately for Hannibal, he got the continuation to allow him to make the attack, but he didn't get a continuation that would have allowed him to do a troop raising. He really could have used building up more forces. Now, he still got his 25 additional Gauls, but I was kind of hoping to pull a bunch of Italians into play here to help in my, in my furthering. Diplomatically, eh, it helped a little bit, but that's already my territory, the Gallic territory there. So I got uh, Venetia and uh, Umbria, but that's it, uh, moving in my direction. Turia is already mine. I've got to start working my way south, but on the other hand, I only need two more territories, right, for the, uh, for the seven-point victory. So maybe it's better to kind of go into trying to improve Umbria and Venetia, if I can, I don't know. Um, but certainly I'm no longer in a position where I'm going to be plundering, uh, devastating the region. Uh, this guy also moved out of his area. Not that I need to devastate. This is Liguria. Uh, no, I'm sorry, this is Cisalpine uh, Gaul. And it's just not, you know, it's not going to make much difference. I've already got them on my side. Uh, so yeah, I've got to start moving some other things or take Capua and hold on to what I've got, which might not be trivial, but it looks pretty good for Hannibal at this point. The more powerful factors in Hannibal's army in this is he has a lot of decent leaders, a lot of chits in the cup, and they're all equal rank except for Hannibal. So although only he can lead this army, his main force, and I may have kind of cheated and taken too little with them initially, I'm not sure. He's not allowed to take less than half of the initial, of, of whatever, whenever he unstacks. But he got a Mago chit. Mago was stacked with him, so he dispatched Mago to go take command of this. Anyone of the uh, Carthaginians except, well, any of the Carthaginians can take command of a stack where Hannibal's not. Immediately took it and marched back down, left some troops, because I was figuring on getting a victory and getting more troops that way. Well, it didn't work out quite that way. I got a victory, but it wasn't as good a one as I had hoped. Uh, the Romans decided not to try to withdraw from the area, so that's plus two that they didn't, that Carthage didn't get. And the overall was, uh, I don't remember, I think it was like 20 to 30 or 25 to 30, I'm not sure which. Uh, I think it was a 20 to 30, which just wasn't quite sufficient. We're talking about losses because the Carthaginians have a bigger army of like 7 to 9. Um, and eh, I forgot about the pursuit though, that might up it. We had six to three. I think that gives us a tiny little pursuit here because we fought it in a clear hex. So that's going to give us a one point pursuit. I might get some percentage there. I think that's a zero. <laughs> okay, so nothing, uh, no additional losses there. It might have been, you know, if I had gotten a really big pursuit roll that pushed me to the 10%, maybe that would have been enough uh, to get the other six hit point, uh, six damage on the Romans? I don't think so. Their army is getting very small. They've actually lost a complete legion at this point there, which is fine. They have no troops. Um, I mean, they have no leaders to command it or anything. They just, it's getting ugly. All the dictator chits are in here, so I could use him to um, raise the armies or alternatively to send uh, some leaders in there. And neither one looks like a terribly useful goal here, but with so many legions in the field, I kind of have to reinforce them. That gets me less troops overall than rolling for legions probably does. <sighs> but these half-assed legions are really just a pain in the ass. They decrease my uh, my reinforcement rolls, and I, I got to proportion it. I've got to make the losses proportional for them. Um, I think we're kind of getting down. Well, there's still a bunch of uh, Carthaginian shits in there, so we'll see some more action coming from them, I think. And the turn is polished off with, uh, well, a new leader showed up here. He got a continuation. I don't know if that's legitimate or not. Para here. And withdrew down to Umbria in this city, leaving this crap behind. Uh, then a 
a couple of the dictator chips came up. Uh, oops, forgot to spend a guile on one of those. Uh, where reinforcements were requested just for the legions in play, beefing them up. And actually, some of that happened after uh, Gizko arrived here, but didn't quite. He didn't get the continuation. Again, one of those. Hey, you, Gizko, go command the army now for a while. Move it. Um, I'm a little disturbed by the way that works, uh, the capability of uh, someone like Hannibal to just have this whole staff of officers that are constantly moving one force. <sighs> That's how the rules read to me. Maybe somebody will tell me, geez, you're all wrong there. Um, but, you know, at the very least, I could have just broken the army up into smaller groups and sent people out, and, and that wouldn't be a problem at all. And it would still have the same kind of effect because, you know, I could leave one unit behind with somebody. They're all equal. So, you know, it, it just, it's very weird to be able to move uh, this rapidly. But on the other hand, maybe all that excess staff, et cetera, allows uh, a better movement. It's not like, you know, this is a year. It's not like the uh, campaign that we're seeing is particularly unbelievable. But what is unbelievable is maybe that the stack that is not Hannibal, just because of the number of leaders in this stack, is capable of outperforming Hannibal. Um, and actually, they're, with the subordinate leader ratings, etc., they're about equivalent uh, of a stack in terms of fighting capability. I think I made the decision to break this into two videos. Um, this is a little shorter than some of my longer videos, but I'm going to probably want to wrap a little bit at the end, although the next one is going to be much shorter. I have some uh, recovery to do to some of the forces. Oh, the siege attritions, they failed to take this. This thing's just degenerating, probably not as quickly as it should because I probably ignored the disorganized there. And in fact, I know I did. Um, but, you know, Hannibal's most of the way there. He's got his five uh, provinces. He needs either two more or he needs Capua. And he's pushing his way down here. Rome's got a tough position. Uh, if I push all the way down and make a quick stab for Capua, that's got to be prevented. On the other hand, I can't just let, you know, now, now we've got uh, Gizko here. He's got, I think, enough forces, the 25, uh, 12, 20, yeah, easily, uh, to be able to devastate Umbria next turn. That's another point to go. Um, do I have another province that I could take easily? Uh, the Etrurian provinces are the most likely. Oh, that's two provinces there. That actually counts as six provinces now, not five. Uh, so yeah, Umbria is enough to win me this. I think it's going to be tough for Rome to prevent a Carthaginian victory here.